ياك النسائي من الصراط المستقيم والصراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح ومولانا الفاتح من صراط الناس بالحق والحق والهادي الى صراط المستقيم وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم العظيم ورضي الله تعالى عن اصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العظيم يا ايها المتشيخ انظر الينا بحال المحضر ولا تعتفي بنظرة تأتي لنا بظفر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله We praise and thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى once again who has given us an opportunity to gather uh, in his house in order to worship him and to remember him and to seek for his forgiveness and also to send salutation upon our master Sayyidina Muhammad um, and we ask him also to send a salutation upon our master Sayyidina Muhammad um, and upon his family and upon his uh, companions and upon the followers of his, of his companions and the followers of the followers of the companions and those that follow them until the day of judgment. Um, Alhamdulillah, I um, won't be long today, but I just want to continue from where we left off uh, last week because we, the time is already late now. Um, we stopped at verse number 92 from the Nasiha, in fact, verse number 90. Uh, verse 92. Mm-hmm. 92. <laughs> we stop at verse number 92. Um, from the advices of Sahib Al Faida, Shaykh Ibrahim Anhu, with regards to uh, what are the things that the, the, the disciple or the murid. Muridullah, meaning the one that just seeks Allah, what they must do to help them in the in the path or in the way. Like uh, we mentioned that uh, Allah said in the, in the Quran, Ittabi'a follow the path of him who has turned himself to me. So because among the creation of Allah there are those that have already uh, set a path uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so because they've already been through that path Allah advised that if you want to reach me follow these individuals because they've already by uh, following them you already also reach your your destination um Sheikh Hassan Sisi who earlier in this uh, advice mentioned that the one who seek the guidance of the scholars or who follow the scholars, they will they will meet Allah safely. Because the, the scholars, the ulama, they are the inheritors of the Prophet. We know that the prophets of Allah they are not inherited. Uh, by dinar or dirham, by gold or silver or, or, or material wealth, but it is the knowledge that they receive, that they, uh, which is a source of light for the guidance of humanity. And so the ulama, they are the ones that are inheritors of this sacred knowledge. And there is no doubt, it's Sahib al Fira, Sheikh Al Islam, Ibrahim, who is among those, and hence. Um, we should try to Allah, uh, we ask Allah to help us to follow, follow the guidance as it is being given. Um, so, in this section, what we was advising was uh, the extra types of worship that the slave of Allah must uh, try to engage in uh, in order to stay connected and stay close to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, 
So in the verse he continued and he said, um, and so the the two prostrations made in fear of Allah and taking steps to the masjid, all of these experiences. So so he was talking about those kind of actions that one must take advantage of so that if they do them, uh, Allah forgive them their, 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 their sins. Um, because the path uh, to Allah is a path of purification. Likewise, you will see all of this advice is always is about uh, purification, to do those things that uh, lead one to be, uh, to be pure from the impurities. You remember, impurities, there are physical impurities, there are also spiritual impurities. Uh, impurities, you see, and the physical ones, when we establish the salah, uh, we make our, we take our path, uh, also to physically remove the impurities, and then we make wudu, um, and then we present ourselves to Allah. In, I know in the, in the Hanafi Madhab, uh, anyone who wishes to be Hanafi application forms are already here. <laughs> um, if you recite, if 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 if, 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 if a, a person falls in a in a river or in a in a pool, and all the limbs of the body that must be washed for to making wudu, they're all washed. You don't you don't have to make wudu because you have fulfilled the the command to wash the certain parts of the body before you you, you start your salah. Yeah. However, it's, it's always better to make wudu with the uh, intention of wudu. Then you also recite uh, Bismillah, Tasmiyah. You say the one who has the intention and he recites Tasmiyah, uh, all the parts of the body that are not required to wash before you make salah. They will be considered washed with the Bismillah. So, they, so that is the position of Imam al <laughs> Um But um, in any case, there is a physical impurity that must be removed, and there's also spiritual impurity. So the, the, the path uh, of suluk is the path of pur- purification, uh, of removing the spiritual impurities. Um, and, and hence, uh, the, 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 the advices here, they are very strong with regards to engaging in actions that uh, will cleanse our forgiveness, uh, will cleanse our sins through uh, asking for forgiveness by various means. So, the Prophet Salam mentioned that when a person makes wudu and then he walks to the place of prayer with every step that they take, a, a sin is forgiven which has been committed in the past and uh, and also a good deed is acquired by such an individual so that is a, a good uh, uh, what you call one can take advantage of that to be able to remove the, impu- uh, the impurities or the spiritual impurities and, and hence he mentions this and then he says likewise the perfection of ablution and the guiding of a blind person as well as fulfilling people's needs all of these are among the expiation of sins so in the next line he mentions that uh, to to make a wudu that, that is to wash the limbs of the body that is required to be washed before you make salah is among the, the uh, those things that purify the servant of Allah. The, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to take his time when he used to make his, his wudu. Um, when he washes his, his mouth, he would recite a prayer. When he, he washes his nostrils, he would recite a prayer. When he washes his face, he would recite a prayer. When he washes his hands, uh, right arm, left arm, 
as well as the feet, left and right, and also anointing his head with the water. All of this, there was a specific prayer that he mentioned. Um, according to some uh, uh, ulama commenting on this, is also a person should uh, imagine also the sins committed by these limbs of the body falling down. Um, and this is in line with the hadith of the Prophet wasalam, that says a person must continue to complete their five daily salah. In fact, it came in a, a question form that if anyone were to um, uh, bath in a river five times a day, you know, how will it be the state of such an individual? So I'm speaking in meaning of the hadith, I'm not quoting it verbatim. And the Prophet wasalam, uh, the, uh, the Sahaba says, of course, such a person will be absolutely clean, clean, 100%. But, and the Prophet said, uh, likewise, the five daily prayer purify the person like the like river, when you, when you bath from your river from all the impurities. But when you wash the face, you also, you, you, the, the intention there also, to, by reciting the prayer of washing the face to remove also is to wipe away all the sins that a person commit with his face. Now when you look at the face, the face is a very powerful organ of a human being. A couple of sins can come out from there alone. <laughs> when you look at something that you're not supposed to look, you hear something that you're not supposed to hear. And the tongue, you speak something that you're not supposed to speak. All of these things, uh, they, 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 are the, they are the gates that can cause the heart to be... I remember Shaq Bai saying, the, 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 the heart is like a, a king, you know, that must be protected. And uh, so all these different gates that uh, are guiding the heart must be blocked so that they don't spoil the heart because the the sins that the person commits, they, they get stuck in, in, in the heart, they, fo they form a black spot, right? But when a person does not make over from these sins, then the, the, the heart gets covered with the, the, with the sins to an extent that even when the person is being advised um, with, uh, with guidance, the heart can't receive such guidance because the heart is completely covered in darkness. And that's why Rasulullah said, Everything has a, 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 a what you call has a polish, and the polish of the heart uh, is the liquor of Allah, right? The continuous recitation of the liquor of Allah. Because once the heart is purified, then that heart is is able to receive uh, guidance. So the face is a uh, big problem. Is is a big problem if one don't look after the the all the different things that the face can uh, can, can harm uh, to protect the heart. So we must protect this. In any case, when you wash the, the arms, the, the, because when a person commits actions, he commits actions with the limbs of the body that maybe sometimes Allah don't, don't like. So these limbs, remember Allah says uh, uh, in Surah Yasin, اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا إيديهم on that day we will we'll, we'll seal their mouth so they can't speak and their limbs will testify to us with regards to all that which they used to do and their feet the places where they used to walk you're not supposed to go to places that uh, they Allah they invite the wrath of Allah they will testify that I went to such a place in that case you can't argue because the limbs will be arguing against the self and, and and hence we we must try to be in a habit to keep our five daily prayers and make proper wudu and also try to observe the sunnah of uh, the wudu so that we imagine all the sins that are committed with these limbs of the body being purified step by step all the time and eventually uh, when we make wudu with this reflection, because we must not take wudu as I just want to perform the salah. Let me just just wash the limbs of the boy. I know myself when I'm late also, it can take me 30 seconds to make wudu, <laughs> right? So you just wash the, the farad parts and then you you enter into salah. 
because now you are in a, a routine habit to say I just want to complete the salah no wudu is ibadah you must reflect especially the people of dhikr Allah he, he classified them among the people of reflection there's people uh, that reflect because this reflection is what make the heart alive and it, 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 it's what makes your actions that you do more powerful because they are done with understanding and with reflection right uh, Allah says those that make the remembrance of Allah standing laying on their side and and on the, or while sitting and they reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth in, because they are signs of reflection now they say one hour of reflection of reflecting or of reflection is better than 80 years of worship right one hour of reflecting is better than 80 years of ibadah it is how powerful because muslims their minds are supposed to be always in a state of reflection and fresh all all all, all the time and all of these things they, they encourage us to do this uh, these actions um the and then he says the guiding of a, a blind person uh, a blind person someone this is not only uh, restricted to a physical blindness it is also the spiritual blindness if your brother or your sister they don't see you know you must show them the way <coughs> you must <coughs> sorry you must show them the way uh, to say this way is not the way that will lead you to uh, uh, success but is a, a way that will lead you to destruction so because May the, the internal eyes, the eyes inside the, 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 of the inner sight, they are blind, they can't see. Because what counts is the eyes that are inside. Inna Allah la yanduru ila suwarikum wa la ila a'amalikum wa lakin yanduru ila ma fi sudurikum. Allah, don't look how you look your out, outwardly, your appearance. Or you don't look at your action, but you look at what is inside your, your, your breast, which is the heart. And, and, and hence, the, the inner limbs, the eyes of the inside, the ears of the inside, all of these things, a person can be spiritually blind. Uh, so, a, so a person who is able to also guide a person to be able to come out from this, uh, or maybe to show them the way while they're blind, all of these things is all part of the, uh, uh, what will expiate this, the, the, the sins of a, a person. And then also, to fulfill the needs of others. If somebody has a need, you try to fulfill their need. That is also part of ibadah. It is also part of worship. Right? Worshipping Allah is not only restricted only to sit in the musalla and pull the tasbih, but it is also to fulfill the needs of others. If you know somebody have a need, like there is a, a clip that has been circulating, Imam Sheikh Hassan Sisi gave when he was here in Cape Town. He said, you know your, your, your brother or your sister, he has need. You don't wait for him or her to come to you. But you must go to, to, to them and try to fulfill the need before they ask you. Because sometimes, some, some people, is also a quality Allah mentions in the Quran. They, they are in dire need, but they will never extend their hand. Right? They will never extend their hand because uh, we, what you call it, mentions this. So, and, but Allah says, when you look at their faces, and then you can see that hey, this person is struggling. But that's why uh, the Imam Shah Hassan Sisi who he was advising, he says, don't wait for your brother to come to you. You must give the, the and fulfill fulfill the need. The Prophet Sallallahu said, "Man kana fi 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 on." He says, whoever is is uh, a person will uh, will continuously to be helped by Allah, so long as he continue to also help his brother. So that uh, one way of receiving Allah's help is to also help someone else. So so all of this is among the things that Allah forgive. Um, inshallah, we we stop here now. Because we already started late, we don't want to overextend the night, mm -hmm. and uh, we're not in a hurry to finish this. One or two lines is also enough. And then, inshallah, Allah, ask Him to 
give us the tawfiq to practice on the advices of uh, uh, his awliya and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, to, we also thank him for blessing us with the shuyukh and to be all, who always uh, guide us to a path that is straight because that is a path that everyone seeks eventually uh, we pray for Allah every day so to seek the path of straightness not path of uh, crookedness and this can only be achieved by suhba by companionship uh, as Allah mentioned uh, or you people of Iman be with the people of uh, truthful uh, people of truthful and these are the awliya that uh, continue to guide so all of these things if we try to follow them yeah, inshallah it will help all of our needs and everything every problem that we have it will help remove all these problems and calamities we ask Allah to remove all the problems and calamities yeah. and to uh, bring easiness Amen. and to remove all the difficulties Amen. and those that are sick Allah, he, he cure them Amen. and he, he bring us uh, uh, his mercy subhanallah bihamdihi subhanaka allahumma bihamdika wa nashadu wa la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruk wa natubu ilik allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammadin al-fatih lima ghalik wa al-khatim lima salak wa nasib al-haqqi wa al-haqqi wa al-hadi la siratika wa al-mustaqimu ala alihi haqqa qadabin wa muhdari razim subhanallah bihamdika rabbil izzatama yisifun wa salamun ala al-masalim wa alhamdulillah rabbil alayhi